Hi, yeah, everybody, and uh, welcome again. Hopefully, he can grab the um, session over there. I actually need a duster now. What I want to do quickly today is um, give you the reason why a business case is needed for every single project. Um, it is is required because we need to have a justifiable reason for going ahead with that project. More importantly, we need to assess the risk, uh, look at the viability of that project, and um, um, it, it's not wise to start something without having a business justification. And that's why every project would always be based on a business case. So you would, it would always be started based on a business case, and throughout the life cycle of that project, we'll continue to review that business case to make sure that there is a viable reason to keep going ahead. But why do we need a business case? Well, let's kind of, I've actually lost the dust off, you know, so I'm going to use my hand to wipe it off, okay? Hey, can somebody find the dust off for me because I don't want to keep using my hand to wipe this off. All right, well, let's get started. Duster, not a tissue paper. Okay, so imagine, imagine a company ends up with, hopefully I can get this right, so that's a light bulb. Not too sure if I got that right, but the moment I do this, I guess you know straight away that that means an idea. Okay, so imagine a company ends up ends up uh, um, ends up coming up with an idea, maybe an idea to improve um, a particular process um, and drive down cost or create a, a much leaner uh, operational um, um, uh, operational structure, operational um, process, whatever it is. Um, or they want to increase their sales, or they want to um, um, gain a competitive advantage over a particular competitor, or add more value to their customers by introducing new products through innovation. Whatever the case is, it starts with an idea, okay? And that idea will be based on particular business models or whatever it is that they do as a business. Now, what you have to understand is that not every idea is, let's try and use this like a muscle, Okay, um, I don't know if that works out well. All right, but let <laughs> don't think it makes it make sense. But let's not every idea is a great idea. Okay, not every idea is a great idea, and that requires discussing it. So you realize that they will have a workshop or they will have a board meeting or whatever it is and discuss the idea, flesh it out, and uh, make sure it applies to certain business principles and stuff like that. And then eventually, that idea becomes a business idea so whatever country you are in that becomes the pound sign or it becomes the dollar sign all right so that idea is gone from so remember it's never an idea then it become a great great idea because they were able to kind of flesh it out and kind of do a stress test on it and felt you know what it's viable you know and then but more importantly is it a business idea is it a service that can be sold is it a service that would, is it something that can improve the way we do uh, things as a business, drive our costs down, increase our revenue, offer more value to our customers, reduce our risk in certain areas? That's what we have to ask ourselves over here at this point. Now, from that moment on, once they think, you know what, we've got a business idea. So this is, the, this is we're looking at the maturity of a business case. We're looking at how the business case materializes. Now, I found the dust is right here, so I'm just gonna get it. So, now remember, it started as a business idea, so we'll now come down here. Let's just draw that arrow down here. All right, and then what they will now ask themselves is, is it a viable business idea? Well, to be viable, it has to be profitable, okay? So you realize that a lot of people have businesses, but for every 10 pounds they spend, they get they make back five pounds, or for every 10 pounds they spend, they make back eight pounds, or they make back 10 pounds where they break even. Well, for it to be profitable, for every 10 pounds I spend, I must be able to make back, say for example, 15 pounds, or at least double my, um, my, my um, um, revenue, which is, or sorry, double my profits, which is uh, 20 pounds. So, is it profitable? Okay, and that's in terms of sales. Uh, in terms of reducing cost, does it reduce our costs and, and as a result of us give us more revenue? Or does it reduce our costs and generate more revenue for us? Does it offer more value to our customers whereby our customers now are, we have repeat sales? So we're able to upsell, we're able to cross sell, and we're able to generate referrals. So it, it's actually making our revenue model a bit more robust. So those are the kind of things that businesses would look at. Okay, now another thing we look at as well beyond um, it being 
Um, another thing we look at as well, beyond it being profitable, is a question of, is it scalable? Now, could we possibly scale this business model? Okay, could we scale from, um, um, could, it, 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 I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say we just um, opened a particular branch. Uh, for the first time as a company, we've just opened a new branch in a particular location. Now the question is, can we scale beyond this branch? Can we open up branches in other areas? That's kind of what scalability means. Or maybe we have just launched an, e on, an online e-commerce site and we're doing very well, once again profitable, within in, in a particular country. Uh, can we scale to other countries? That's kind of what we mean. So basically grow the business. Business, you know so can we scale then the other area the last one is um, um, is it sustainable do we actually have a sustainable business model and what do we mean by sustainability well you could actually launch if, I don't know if you guys remember Groupon so Groupon when Groupon came out it was like the best thing since sliced bread everyone was all addicted to sales everyone was addicted to the offers and stuff like that but I don't know if you remember the last time you probably received a Groupon email or the last time you saw a Groupon ad. Um, if you look at their stock value, their, their, their stock values is dropped. Why? Because they didn't have a sustainable business model. How do you sustain 70% of 80% of for long periods of time? Uh, where's your profit margin? Uh, and nobody's in the business of making losses. So yeah, they had a great deal, which met the needs of the end of the consumers. But did it benefit? The business now for a business to work for a business to grow its business needs must marry it's like a marriage must marry the consumer needs okay when the consumer needs are met but the business is suffering eventually the business shuts down if the business is trying to get the most out of their customers and at a point where the customer literally can't afford the service or they don't see value in the service that's a divorce eventually but where the business needs and the customer needs meet and they get married, then you have a very happy, long-lasting marriage. And what you have out of it, in terms of children, are upsells, cross-sells, um, referrals, and all that stuff. You know, which is really, really cool. Um, so, if you can achieve, if you can take an idea to a great idea, to a business idea, to a profitable idea, make it scalable and sustainable, then there is potential for growth. Okay, and. At that point, you have what you call a business case, which is really, 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 really cool. So, when we're creating business cases, one of the things we look at are the print, are the techniques that we use to create those business cases. Uh, we look at the business strategy, internal and external strategies. We look at um, and use a number of techniques to be able to do that. So, when you guys start uh, tomorrow, these are the training session is actually starting next. Uh, sorry, starting tomorrow, Saturday at 10 a.m. So don't forget, you can pop in and come see it. We will now show you how to go about creating a business case from scratch. This is very much very high level um, um, explanation and um, it doesn't really give you the detail of how to go about creating business cases. But what we will do is we will now tell you how to go about doing it from beginning to the end. Um, it will end with an executive summary. The executive summary is the last thing that you do because it's a summary of all the hard work you've done, but there's a lot of things that go into creating that business case, like for starts, your feasibility study, um, you might look at identifying your target audience, carrying out your industry research, doing a lot of research, uh, for example, um, and when you're doing your research, you want to make it, make sure it's based on industry, um, uh, you want to make, make sure it's based on, um, trying to find the right word for it. You want to make sure it's based on industry standard. It's not industry standard. I'm trying to remember the word. Credible. You want to make sure it's from credible research companies when you're doing your research. So the likes of Mintel, the likes of Gartner, and all those places, depending on what it is that you're actually doing your research on. So for example, you don't want to get your research from Wikipedia or get your research from Google or say that, or say that BBC said this. You know, it's not credible. Um, from that point of view, you want to make sure that uh, a market research company is actually spending their time to get generate that data. Because as a business analyst, you talk based on facts and figures. You don't say, I feel so strongly in my spirit that we should do this. You say based on the data and based on the statistics, 
there's an X percent chance that this will be successful and an X percent chance that it won't be successful. However, based on that X percent chance, even if it's not successful, we will still survive as a business. That's the kind of thing you want to be talking about, you know, using facts and figures to explain what you're doing. You want to be looking at your external strategies. So looking at the um, techniques to actually define your external strategies, like Port of Five Forces, uh, which looks at your barrier to entry, uh, looks, uh, which, looks, which looks at your supplier power, your buyer power, rivalry among existing firms. You want to look at other external fact, um, other um, external strategies like um, PESO, look what are the political factors affecting your business, what are the economical factors, what are the uh, PESO, 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 PE, um, S, uh, social factors affecting your business, what are the legal factors, PESO, T, what are the technological factors, what are the um, I think I've said legal already, <laughs> so I jumped in. And um, what, um, what are economical? Um, uh, let's start again. What are the political factors, economical factors, social factors, technological factors, legal factors, and environmental factors? So that's PESO. Uh, or you could just talk about PEST: uh, political, economical, social, technology. Uh, so it depends on. Um, what it is that you're trying to achieve, and then you then look at your you then, you then do your competitor analysis where you bring in the SWOT uh, analysis, you look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and uh, threats that are affecting that business. And you could do it from an external point of view. So, what are the what are your strengths politically? What are your competitors' strengths politically? What are your um, strengths uh, um, economically? What are your um, competitors' strengths? Um, economically and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things that you have to look into um, in order to create a business case. We will actually take you through every single one of those steps and explain those things to you. And then you have an opportunity to actually build business cases uh, working on one of our projects, for example. So let's say, for example, the big data project that we're working on that's very much heavily involved on um, the end result is predictive analysis, being able to uh, make predictions based on our existing um, um, target audience and customer base and look at ways that we can generate revenue and add more value to them, uh, predict um, exactly when someone is in the buying cycle and when someone is dropping off the buying cycle and stuff like that. That's a major project we're working on. Well, guess what? It would have had a business case to start. It would have had a business case to actually start that project. And that business case would have a viable reason for us to do it. And that reason will be based on our business objectives as a company over the next three to five years. And when you join a company and you, as a project manager, in, are inheriting a business case, you'd realize that that business case, the, the project you're working on, is based on that business case. And you need to make sure that there's um, a continually a viable reason to continue working after that project and you make sure that when you're delivering that project um, eventually when you deliver that project it's in line with the exist uh, the original business case and that business case will be updated throughout the life cycle of the project why because things change you know external factors could affect things internal factors could also affect things so um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow and you would learn a great deal more but this is a little snippet of what we do here and how we do it and um, let's get your comments. Um, I'll go on the comments later, read through it, answer your questions, and then we'll take it from there. Take care, guys, and God bless.